Holy God, creator of heaven and earth, Holy and mighty, redeemer of the world, Holy Immortal One, Sanctifier of the Faithful. Holy, Blessed and Glorious Trinity, One God. From all evil and mischief, from pride, vanity and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred and malice, and from all evil intent, from sloth, worldliness, and love of money, from hardness of heart and contempt for your word and your laws, from sins of body and mind, from deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil, from famine and disaster, from violence and murder and dying unprepared. In all times of sorrow, in all times of joy, in the hour of our death, and at the day of judgment. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood, and obedience, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation. By your ministry in word and work, by your mighty acts of power, by the preaching of your reign. By your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit. Hear our prayers, O Christ our God. Hear us, O Christ. Govern and direct your holy church, fill it with love and truth, and grant that it, it that unity which is your will. Hear us, O Christ. Give us boldness to preach the gospel in all the world and to make disciples of all the nations. Hear us, O Christ. Enlighten your bishops, priests, and deacons with knowledge and understanding, that by their teaching and their lives they may proclaim your word. Hear us, O Christ. Give your people grace to witness to your word and bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Hear us, O Christ. Bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived. Hear us, O Christ. Strengthen those who stand, comfort and help the faint-hearted, raise up the fallen, and finally beat down Satan under our feet. Hear us, O Christ. Guide the leaders of the nations into the ways of peace and justice. Hear us, o Christ. Give your wisdom and strength to the President of the United States, the Governor of this state, and the Mayor and members of the Town Council, that in all things they may do your will for your glory and for the common good. Hear us, o Christ. 
give to the Congress of the United States, the members of the President's Cabinet, those who serve in our state legislature, and all others in authority, the grace to walk always in the ways of truth. Bless the justices of the Supreme Court and all those who administer the law, that they may act with integrity and do justice for all your people. Hear us, o Give us the will to use the resources of the earth to your glory and for the good of all. Bless and keep all thy people. Hear us, o Comfort and liberate the lonely, the bereaved, and the oppressed. Hear us, o keep in safety those who travel and all who are in peril. Heal the sick in body, mind, or spirit, and provide for the homeless, the hungry, and the destitute. Guard and protect all children who are in danger. Shower your compassion on prisoners, hostages, and refugees, and all who are in trouble. Hear us, o Forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and turn their hearts. Hear us, o Hear us as we remember those who have died, and grant us with them a share in your eternal glory. Hear us, o Give us true repentance, forgive us our sins of negligence and ignorance, and our deliberate sins, and grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your word. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors 
when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. 
The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In our religious life, we know that the words we use actually shape our belief and our faith. We Episcopalians care deeply about the words we use not only in our worship, but also more broadly in talking about God and our relationship with God. We're especially fond of the prayers that week by week, season by season, year by year, seep into every fiber of our soul. We know that they voice our brokenness, our fears, our hopes, and our joys. We have a term for this, in Latin, of course, so that we can sound extra smart and a little bit smug, lex orandi, lex credendi. It literally translates, the law of prayer is the law of belief, or to put it more simply, in the words of one of the great Episcopal liturgical scholars of the 20th century, praying shapes believing. Among these belief-shaping words in our liturgical and theological language, we have some that we use only in the context of our worship life, of our religious life. Words like sacrament or episcopate or lectionary give us a sort of insider's language that might as well be a foreign tongue to others. We also use words that non-Christians would know, but they would quite possibly have a different understanding of their meaning. Words like spirituality or prayer or salvation. We often teach about these terms because our shared understanding and use is really important to our shared life of worship and service. I have a favorite word like this, one that we quite consciously use differently from its common definition and understanding, joy. I love to talk about joy. It's a word that shows up frequently in our scriptures and in our liturgies. It's one of the most important words of the collect of the day today. If you look it up in the dictionary, you know what it will offer as the most common synonym, right? Happiness. And that's a fine synonym in general, but it's not really what we mean when we talk about joy as part of our faith. When we talk about joy, we are specifically referring to an experience of God. C.S. Lewis wrote a book about his early life and his reluctant journey from convinced atheist to convicted believer. He titled it, Surprised by Joy. In it, he describes what he comes to understand as experiences of joy in his life. He describes joy like this. It was a sensation, of course, of desire, but desire for what? Before I knew what I desired, the desire itself was gone the whole glimpse withdrawn, the world turned commonplace again, or only stirred by a longing for the longing that had just ceased. In a sense, the central story of my life is about nothing else. The quality is that of an unsatisfied desire which is itself more desirable than any other satisfaction. I call it joy, which is here a technical term and must be sharply distinguished both from happiness and pleasure. Joy, in this sense, has indeed one characteristic and one only in common with them, the fact that anyone who has experienced it will want it again. I doubt whether anyone who has tasted joy would ever, if both were in their power, exchange it for all the pleasures in the world. But then, joy is never in our power, and pleasure often is. In other words, joy as we Christians understand it is only an experience and gift from God. 
Joy is what we feel when we sense God being present with us, when we sense God holding us up, when we sense God's healing balm on our hurts. We can't control it, we can't manufacture it, we can't hold on to it. As Lewis puts it, all joy reminds. It is never a possession, always a desire for something longer ago or further away or still about to be. When we know joy, this sweet longing for that healing, sustaining presence of God, we long for nothing but that longing. And if you pay any attention to the lives of the saints who show us the way and who have known joy beyond what we could even imagine, we know that joy comes from following God's ways, responding to God's call, sharing God's love, whatever the cost, without regard to our own safety or standing, or success in the world. This Lent, I have invited us each week to take up, to reflect on, to ruminate over, to luxuriate in a simple but profound verse from the psalm appointed for the day. I've reminded us each week that the psalms give expression to every possible facet of human experience. Today, on our fifth and final Lenten Sunday, it's the final verse of our psalm passage for today, Psalm 51, verse 13, that is our gift to receive with gratitude. It says, Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. The psalmist knows the source, the only source of joy, God's saving help, God's loving presence. This makes joy the perfect subject of our final Lenten Sunday, doesn't it? Too often we approach Lent with its penitence and solemnity as a time to embrace our guilt, to feel miserable about our misery, as a way perhaps to gain some special favor from God or to save us from ourselves. We all too easily miss the fact that when we take our Lenten journey in its fullness, as a time to look deeply within, we can cultivate our deep longing for God's saving help rather than wallow in shame or guilt. When we approach Lent this way, the way we're supposed to, we discover that our Lenten disciplines of self-examination and repentance, of prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and reading and meditating on God's holy word actually lead us into pure joy and lift us out of our distress, whatever the source of that distress might be. Our Lenten journey properly leads us to joy and sustains us in God's spirit. If we think that the point of Lent is to feel the harsh discipline we might receive from a stern parent or teacher or coach, we are imposing some worldly misfortune onto our faith life. No. Lenten discipline might be challenging, but those disciplines lead us to call on God's saving help. When we come to lean solely on God's saving help and not on our own will or wit, we see that we have absolutely nothing to fear. We come to long to be fully the person God created us to be. We come to long to be fully present to God who is fully bountifully present to us. And for God's saving us time and again, for Jesus' journey to the cross, the ultimate example of God's saving help, for our responding by giving of ourselves with joy, for God's life-giving love for us and constantly, relentlessly offering us the joy of saving help with our whole heart and body, soul and mind, we give thanks.
Let us stand and proclaim our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We, we believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, God eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come, come again, again in glory to judge, judge the living and the dead, and his, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Peace. 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 Good morning. Welcome to our fifth Sunday in Lent. Our Lenten journey is uh, about to reach its climax as we begin Holy Week next week. We have a whole uh, complete uh, journey uh, to the cross and to celebrate the resurrection during Holy Week, beginning with Palm Sunday a week from today. Uh, that whole schedule of services is on our website. Uh, it was uh, out in an email as well. Uh, the most important pieces of that are that we'll have an all-night watch on Maundy Thursday, uh, as is our custom, but it will be out in the garden chapel. And one of the best gifts you can give yourself is to, um, is to come and watch and pray for an hour sometime in the middle of that night in the quiet and still of those wee hours between, especially between midnight and 5 a.m. Those are the best hours, right, Father Burrell? Yes. So sign up and come, come join us for one of those. Um, so Palm Sunday, 8 and 10 uh, in person, 11 online. Uh, Maundy Thursday, we'll have a, a agape meal at 6.30. Yeah, agape meal online. Uh, make your own meal and come join us for that. There's some prayers and some conversation that are part of that. A wonderful meal, and then the service will be at 7.30 online, and then the all-night watch. Uh, 8 a.m. Good Friday morning in the Garden Chapel, noon online, 4 p.m. Stations of the Cross uh, in person, the Great Vigil of Easter, 8 p.m.? Someone's going to have to make sure I'm here on time for these. I know the schedule's online. I'll look it up. 8 p.m. Uh, in the Garth on Saturday evening for the Great Vigil of Easter, and then Easter Day, 6 a.m., sunrise service in the Garden Chapel, and then 7.39 and 10.30, three simultaneous services at each of those times in the Garden Chapel, the Garth, and the South Lawn. For those Easter Day services, all ten of those, um, you need to, we want you to make reservations. It's very easy to do. You just go online, click a link. It's in the email blast and on our website. Uh, click a link and, uh, and just pick the service and how many people are going, and that way we can make sure we've got uh, all those, the right spaces for the right people. I'm excited about it. Yeah, go for it. So, um, very shortly, if you have not already, you should be receiving in the mail a letter and an estimate of giving card. This is what we also sometimes call a pledge card, but we're using the estimate of giving language this year. We encourage you to look at that, pray about it, reflect about it, and then tell us what your estimate of giving for the year will be. You can do that in three ways. One is by filling out the card that you get in the mail and sending it back in in the envelope. The second is by coming to church, bringing it to church on Palm Sunday at, here in person and we'll collect it. And the third is simply by calling me or April, calling the church and telling us what, um, yeah. what you're asking giving to In addition years. to that, I assume if, the, if someone shows up on Palm Sunday and they don't have the card, there'll be one here they can fill yes, out. Yes, there will be. And can they go on our, on our website, on our Realm site and fill that in as well? It's, um, it's actually, you, you can do it through Realm, but it, it, there's, a for, there's a form on, on the actual on, website. On the actual website, yeah, perfect. That's, 
Yes, so lots right. of ways to do that, but, but call uh, Mother Margaret uh, if you're not sure what to do. Uh, and I hope that as we've made this Lenten journey of gratitude with our, with our daily reflections and our sermons about how God is with us and so gracious in so many different ways that we'll recognize the, the need we have of our life together here at Bethesda and the need to keep it strong, and all of us need to be part of doing that. Uh, and so this is a year, a great year, a great opportunity to start regularly uh, financially supporting if you haven't, uh, increasing that support if you have. Thank you for all of that in advance, uh, and we're excited for a wonderful year. As we end this pandemic, uh, and after Easter, we'll start talking about how, how it looks to regather in the building and when we're be, we'll be able to do that as vaccines become a commonplace now. So that's all happening. Well, we have an 11th service on Easter Day. That's right, we do. We have an online service. Yes, the one you don't need to make a reservation for for Easter Day is the online service. That one you can come to without any reservation at all. Uh, but, uh, and that will be at what time? 11 o'clock. 11, 11 o'clock, our usual Sunday time for our online service. Thank you. Good. And that'll have everything, Easter decorations in here, brass, choir, brass, brass, all those good choir, things, right? Choir, Eucharist, everything. Oh, good. It's the resurrection. Wait. It'll be glorious. Good. Um, one could even come in person and then come to the online one. I would do both. Yeah. I will do both. You will do both. So will I. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And And also also with with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We We lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is is right right to give give our thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By By your will, they were created and and have have their their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation. But we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have Have mercy, mercy, Lord, Lord, for we are sinners sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By By his blood blood he reconciled us. us. By By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our holy and righteous forebears, Redeemer and Mother of Israel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Risen Lord, Lord, be known known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your Church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray.
The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank, we thank you, you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, Send us out to do the work you have given us to do, 
to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Look with compassion, O Lord, upon this your people, that rightly observing this holy season, they may learn to know you more fully and to serve you with a more perfect will through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.